We wrote briefly already on Browderism and its role in weakening the communists before the bourgeois launched the McCarthy whack offensives, but today 80 years on we must look at Browderism more closely to analyze it and how such a turn can be avoided in the future. What does Comrade Haja have to say about Earl Browder and the disillusionment of the Kpusa? Haja teaches us that in conformity with his ultra-rightist concepts and submitting to the pressure of the bourgeoisie, after the disbanding of the Communist Party. In May 1944, Browder announced the creation, in place of the party, of a cultural and illuminist association called the Communist Political Association, justifying this with the argument that the American tradition allegedly demanded the existence of only two parties. This association, organized as a network of clubs, was to engage mainly in activity of political education on a national, regional and local plane. Browder not only brought revisionism into the leadership of the Kpusa, but he outright dissolved the Kpusa itself, the vanguard party of the working class, the party which should have led the American workers to socialism, was reduced to a mere advocacy association along the lines of the NAACP. In the history of American communism there has been no crime greater than this. When ill-informed comrades ask why we have fought for so long against revisionism, when they ask why we have drawn so many demarcation lines, we must remind them that it was not the external bourgeois who destroyed the Kpusa, but rather the revisionists, the bourgeois detachment within the working class who betrayed us. We must never let our guard down and trick ourselves into finding allies among the revisionists and social fascists just because they fly a red banner. To do so would lead us back down the path of Browder and defeat. Returning to Haja he again correctly analyzes the refounded Pusa to quote the opportunist line of Browder was formally rejected, his influence was never eliminated in the Communist Party of the USA. Later, especially after 1956, the ideas of Browder flourished again, this is again absolutely true, not just for the Pusa, but for the vast majority of supposed Marxist-Leninist communist parties in America and the world. The line of Marxism-Leninism was replaced by a fuzzy half-hearted and unprincipled critique of capitalism and a total misunderstanding of fascism largely based on the incorrect ideas of Dimitrov. Today only the US section of the Comintern follows a truly Marxist-Leninist line, all other parties, regardless of how bravely they may have fought in the past, have fallen into the swamp of revisionism and cannot be recovered or reformed back into true communist parties. Comrade Haja was also correct in drawing parallels between the revisionist line of Mao and that of Browder as later analysis on the basis of Stalinism Hajaism showed that both of these revisionist trends can be in part traced back to Dimitrovism and the betrayal at the Seventh World Congress, the Congress of Class Collaboration which is exactly what occurred in China and many of the people's democracies. Haja reminds us that a Browder tried to present his anti-Marxist and counter-revolutionary views as the general line of the international communist movement. Under the pretext of the creative development of Marxism and the struggle against dogmatism, he, like all the earlier revisionists, tried to argue that the new epoch after the Second World War required a communist movement which would re-examine its former ideological convictions and relinquish its old formulas and prejudices, which, according to him, cannot help us at all to find our way in the new world. This was a call for rejection of the principles of Marxism-Leninism. Perhaps Browderism did not catch on in name but its spirit lives on in many parties in the world above all in the Chinese Communist Party. Browder himself even recognized the kinship between himself and the so-called Chinese communists to quote him, what is called the communist camp in China, because it is led by outstanding members of the Chinese Communist Party, is much closer to American concepts of democracy than is the so-called Kuomintang camp, it is closer in every way, including the wider scope given to free enterprise in the economic life. E. Browder, Tehran, Our Path in War and Peace, New York 1944, page 26, We are not here to offer an extensive critique of Maoism which we have already done in Do WM but merely to point out here the striking parallels between 20th century Americanism and the Chinese road to communism, both of which have nothing to offer the workers and toilers but a life of slavery to the bourgeois under the line of class collaboration. Some comrades may ask if we can consider Earl Browder to be a corpse of Bolshevism given his long-seeming revolutionary history starting in the 1900s. We must respond in the negative, Earl Browder never had a proper understanding of Bolshevism and was merely an opportunist who moved from one trend to another based on which ways the winds were blowing, in the 1900s he was a socialist, in the 1910s a syndicalist, in the 20s and 30s a ardent Bolshevik. During the Dimitrov Comintern he was an Americanist, and during the McCarthy-Wack trials he was an anti-communist and a mere reformer. 
To call someone a corpse of Bolshevism would imply that they properly understood Bolshevism but under the pressure of the bourgeois capitulated and turned to revisionism or retreated from the struggle, Molotov is one such person, Browder was not. He was an opportunist to his core. All American communists owe a great debt to Comrade Enver Haja, a true internationalist, who correctly analyzed the American situation and finally offered a true Marxist-Leninist critique of Browderism free from the influence of the revisionist Pussa who criticized Browder only to save their own asses. To all American workers and toilers the only party today which continues the work of Enver Haja in unmasking the traitors amongst our ranks and leading not only the American proletariat but the world proletariat to victory is the common turn. If you want to call yourself a communist you'll come to us and join a true communist party.